In this video, we will look at the use of pass by value and pass by reference parameters. So let's now look at the detail of the exam question. The array in nouns is defined as a global variable containing the following strings dog through to desk. Let's just refresh our memory on the definition of a global variable. The lifespan of a global variable is the entire program. That means it's accessible throughout the whole duration of the program. And the visibility of a global variable is the entire program. So it can be used by all parts of the global program, including sub programs. The function use nouns is defined below and it uses the global array nouns. The number of words in the array is passed as a parameter to the function use nouns. So we can see here we have our function use nouns and I've named the parameter p number of nouns. Uh, I like to use the letter p in the front of a parameter to remind me I'm dealing with a parameter as opposed to a global variable. And we can see here that it is defined by value. Now, the question isn't asking about the functionality of the function itself. So that's not really important to the exam question. So we're going to leave that for now because it's not relevant to what the question is now going to ask, which states P number of nouns is a parameter passed by value. Describe the difference between passing a parameter by value and passing a value by reference. To promote a nice summative view of the answer to this question, I've broken it down into two major parts, the characteristics of pass by reference and the characteristics of pass by value. Now it's very important that we address both pass by reference characteristics and pass by value characteristics. If this was a two part or a two mark exam question, I would expect one bullet point from the pass by reference and one bullet point from a pass by value. So let's look at the characteristics of pass by reference. The sub program, whether it be a function or procedure, receives the memory address this is in RAM or cache RAM. At this point, we're not really bothered about which of the variable. It can make changes to the data within the original. So you're given the original memory reference. So any changes to that memory, the contents of that memory address will change the original data value. So therefore, it will be quite clear to state it would overwrite the original data value. Any changes following the end of the subprogram will change the original variable's data. So changes made within a subprogram will last beyond the scope of that subprogram. It will make the changes flow into the rest of the program. So one way to help you remember the difference between pass by reference and value, because a lot of my students do get these terms mixed up, is reference refers to a specific memory location of that variable. So therefore, it's referring to the original data source. Therefore, any changes to an original source will change the original data. Pass by value, very important that people state that it is a copy of the data that is received as a parameter by the subroutine. Any changes will be made to the copy of this variable. No reference is made to the original memory address in, in, in RAM or cache RAM. It will not overwrite the data of the original variable because the address of the original variable isn't given. 
One way to think of pass by value parameters as they are treated as a local variable. So therefore, they will expire and erase once the local copy is passed to the subroutine. Once the subroutine is finished, the data will be erased. So copies of the contents of the original memory location are given to the subroutine when we use pass by value. Now, I've deliberately used the words subprogram and subroutine interchangeably to get students familiar with both terms. A subprogram or a subroutine, same thing, can be defined as being a procedure or a function. So now let's look at a practical application of pass by value and pass by reference parameters. So within our main subprogram, we have a variable identified as debt with the value of 100 units and a variable called interrate with the value of 10 units and a simple print statements to output the contents of those two variables. So when we run the program, we can see in these two lines that we have the initial debt and the initial interest rate printed out as expected. We then call our subroutine, and in this case it's a procedure called interest because there is no return value. We are passing the interest rate and the debt variables to the subroutine. Subprogram is another word for subroutine. You'll notice that the first parameter is identified as P rate. I like to use the word P in front of my parameters to remind me I'm dealing with a parameter. So in this case, this parameter P rate is defined as being value. So we know that's receiving receiving a copy of the original data. And that our second parameter P debt is identified by reference. So we are given the memory location of the original data. We can see here we're doing a simple calculation of a renewed value of debt in this line here. And because it's by reference, this will change the original memory locations data source. And for demonstration purposes, you'll notice that I'm changing the value of P rate, the interest rate. Because this is passed by value, you will find this is a temporary change because parameters passed to subroutines are classed as local variables and their lifespan will expire on the close of this subroutine or subprogram. So let's just look at the two print lines now following the execution of the subroutine. So we have the new debt value. So you can see that that is now increased by the interest rate set. So 110 units as expected. And the new interest rate, you'll notice that that has remained unchanged. That's because uh, the change that was made to the interest rate was only made to the copy because it was passed by value within the subprogram interest. When the subprogram interest concluded, this data within the local variable P rate would be erased.